Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. Today I'm going to be following up on a popular video that I did that I really don't like the fact that it became popular. It's talking about an Android developer verification system, which would mean that Android would be moving a little bit closer to iOS in terms of them being able to choose what it is you're allowed to do with your phone, what you can install on your phone. So as it says on the Consumer Rights Wiki, Google announced the developer verification requirements on August 25th, 2025 through the Android Developers Blog. According to Suzanne Frey, Vice President of Product, Trust, and Growth for Android, the system is designed to combat malicious actors who hide behind anonymity to harm users by impersonating developers developers and use their brand image to create convincing fake apps. They're citing security statistics, and the way this would work is essentially a developer would have to be verified in order to be able to install their app on your phone, and if they're not verified, then you can't install their app on your phone. That sucks. This is really one step closer to we get to choose what it is you're allowed to install on your computer. Because that's what a smartphone is. A smartphone is a computer. It's smaller, but it's still a computer. And if you told people 20 or 30 years ago that the company who sold you the computer gets to choose what you get to install on the computer, people would lose their shit. But with a smartphone, it's like, meh, for some reason, nobody cares. And this is something that matters because, again, almost everything has a computer in it nowadays. I mean, your car is a computer in it. In fact, your car is a smartphone, which is the topic of the last video I did in Hyundai, essentially, where you need special tools to be able to replace the brakes in your car. And this is all just starting to go too far. So it seems like some progress has been made here. All of you speaking up as much as you did, did something. We recently announced new developer verification requirements, which serve as an additional layer of defense in our ongoing effort to keep Android users safe. We know that security works best when it accounts for the diverse ways people use our tools. That's why we announced this change early, to gather input and ensure our solutions are balanced. We appreciate the community's engagement and have heard the early feedback, M- specifically from students and hobbyists who need an accessible path to learn, and from power users who are more comfortable with security risks. We're making changes to address the needs of both groups. To understand how these updates fit into our broader mission, it's important to first look at the specific threats we're tackling. And they bring up some examples of online scams. One example is where someone will call a victim claiming that their bank account is compromised and they'll use fear and urgency to direct them to a sideload of verification app to secure their funds, often coaching them from, to ignore standard security warnings. Once installed, this app, which is actually malware, intercepts the victim's notifications. When the user logs into their real banking app, the malware captures their two-factor authentication codes, giving the scammer access to everything they need to drain their account. And what this comes down to is that I can honestly believe some of this, is that you have enough people in the world that will essentially just believe anything when they're given a phone call, any sort of scam whatsoever, and that because of that, they need to be able to take away everybody else's ability to actually use their hardware and their software the way that they want to. You can't install applications of your choice on your computer because somebody else at some point fell victim to a scam. I understand where they're coming from here. I can honestly, like when I read the story, I can get it. As somebody who has done customer service, whether it's from my own company or Lowe's Home Delivery, when you hear the same thing, the same uh, issue on the other side of the phone for like the 14,000th time, you start to lose it. Like something snaps in your head and you're like, fuck it. If I just have control over this entire experience, we can put this away for good. Like at one point with data recovery, at one point, you know, there is this thing called a migration assistant with an Apple product where you can either just copy files over one by one or just take the files and drag and drop it. Or you could use migration assistant on a clone of a customer's old hard drive or SSD and then use migration assistant to copy everything over. Like their wallpaper, their passwords, their settings, their software. And at one point we had a rule at my company, which is if we cannot do a data recovery that allows migration assistant to copy everything we're just not doing it we're not doing it because after the fucking ten thousand time that somebody's like but what happened to my wallpaper it doesn't look the same as it did before and for a 100 hundred dollar data recovery i have a customer service person getting paid a living wage spending two or four hours on the phone with somebody to explain to this person who doesn't know their email password or anything have, trying to walk them through making everything work it's like that ain't worth it to me anymore I get that. I understand that. In my experience, just, just my personal experience, there is no better way to make the elderly cry than when they ask for data recovery from a computer and for you to take all of their files uh, exactly as they were and put them in a folder with the exact same folder structure that they originally had. If you do that, that is one of the best ways... I, 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 obviously, I'm venting a little bit of frustration here, but you, anybody who's done this uh, sort of retail stuff understands what I'm getting at. External drive, sure. Uh, here is my MacBook. I want the files off of it. My SSD is dead. Best of luck giving them their files from the user's folder and saying, here's the folder with your pictures, your music. No, 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 no. Migration assistant. Uh, and, I, I, and when I read this, Either A, they have a really good PR person, or B, uh, they uh, th this was actually the reason, and may perhaps the person who was doing the customer service, who was on the front lines of that type of shit over and over and over and over and over again, was the one that ha got to be able to make that decision. And again, when it comes to a company this big, I don't think that that person should have the ability to make that decision. You got to suck it up and deal with it and understand that it sucks. Some people are going to cry. Some people are going to be hor like, horrified, but that is the cost of freedom and not living in a world where one 
100% of the smartphones sold are smartphones where you are not able to choose what applications you install. This is a computer and we cannot live in a world where 100% of the mobile computers that you can buy like this do not allow you to install programs on them of your choosing. That, that's unacceptable. And if it means that some customer service people or some of the people on the front lines have to continue to take it on the chin the way I did every single effing time, one of my favorite employees loving me, hates the migration assistant because sometimes it would be buggy if you didn't... Um, to uh, fix the clone right before, but would do one of those, here are all your files, drag and drop. Those are some of the most miserable customer service experiences in my life. If I could deal with them, so can Google. We're not talking about a policy that's being put together by a, a one random business like mine, one off business. We're talking about a policy that's being put into place by one of two players in a duopoly where 50% of the market already doesn't have the ability to install any application of their choice on their computer. And that's where this becomes a serious problem. So it looks like they are changing this and they are moving in a different direction. Based on this feedback and our ongoing conversation with the community, we are building a new advanced flow that allows experienced users to accept the risks of installing software that isn't verified. Boom. I'll be honest with you, I was surprised that it went this way. With the way most things have been going that I go over on this channel on a regular basis when it comes to freedom to be able to do what you want with your hardware and software, I really figured this is going to go by the wayside. There are cases in the past, and I've pointed them out on this channel, where a company has backed away from an unpopular decision. For example, PayPal choosing to not refund the fee if you refund a customer, if they used to not refund the 30 cent fee, but they would refund the 2.9% transaction fee. Now, if you refund a customer, they buy something, they call you five seconds later and say, whoops, my bad, I clicked the wrong thing, I bought the wrong thing, and you refund them their $1,000, you have to eat $29 or you have to charge the customer a $29 restocking. And something tells me that Amazon and Walmart and Costco's merchant services stack is not dealing with that, but small businesses are having to have that miserable conversation that will end up in one-star reviews. They backed away from it now, but that doesn't mean three or six or 15 or 20 months from now that this is not just going to come sneaking its way back in. So make sure to be vigilant. Uh, thank you very much for everybody who spoke up about this, who shared it, who talked about it, who anytime this came up anywhere in your personal or business professional life, you decided to hammer it home as much as humanly possible. That is important to be able to install applications of your choosing on your computer, because if you didn't, this would not have happened. I really appreciate it. Your voices are not useless. They do result in change, even if it's very, very rare, not very often, not all the changes you want. This over here shows that you're not wasting your time. Thank you very much. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.